Hey guys, in uh, this video I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of the requirements for setting up a temporary power pole. I've uh, looked online at several different videos and I had never seen anything that fit into the particular area where I live. Codes vary from one location to the other, so I thought that I would do this video to show you a little bit about some of the requirements for a temporary power service uh, within this area, within Kentucky. Uh, of course, even within Kentucky, the codes vary some. Now, this is for a new construction, as you may be able to see behind me, depending on the glare of the sun. And we have got our transformer pole and line set. They did this just a couple of weeks ago. And then I started assembling the temporary service uh, pole off site. Now, some of the requirements for this area is that the pole must be a minimum of a 4x4 four four, and it must be a minimum of 14 foot long or larger. Now, you can use a 6x6 six six or uh, larger, I suppose, if you wanted to, but it has to be mounted a minimum of 10 feet and a maximum of 25 feet away from the transformer pole. Now this one is kind of in the middle. I'm probably about uh, probably about 18, 15 to 18 feet approximately. And that is how this pole is currently set up. You can also see that I've got some additional bracing here. The post must be guided. And you know, it's always good to have a little bit of extra support on these to make sure that it does not collapse. Uh, starting from the weather head up top on this particular pole, and this is why you want to assemble these sometimes off-site and then set them up, it must extend above where the utility is going to connect onto it. You can also see here the eye bolt that runs through the post, through the 4x4 post. That is to give the utility company something to tie the cable on to help support the electric lines so you got to make sure that you get that in as well now coming down from the weather head i'm using triplex cable i also have the conduit fastened and at a few different points there are minimum uh, requirements for how far you can be from the weather head as well as the uh, uh, meter base and you want to make sure that you secure it accurately and in here you can see our triplex here we have the two hots as well as our neutral coming in through the meter base as well as through here coming in through here we are then coming into our main disconnect panel our main disconnect is right here and there must be for these panels within within this area they must be a minimum of 60 amps but we're a little above this we've actually gone with a 100 amp panel on that uh, that way we have you know plenty of room uh, to play with and which really for a temporary service we don't really need a lot other than just being able to run some power tools coming in here our main is tied here we also have our neutral tied here and something that you've got to remember that a lot of people overlook is you must have the uh, neutral bonded within this area it, it must be bonded and you can see that we are bonded here with this strap we also have our ground bar over here our bare ground coming down it is fastened to the pole also and then going out to the ground rods. There must be a minimum of two ground rods uh, for this area. The first ground rod cannot be less than two foot away from the post and the other one must be at least six foot away from that and they must be driven all the way in. I know some areas may allow you on a temp service to only go part of the way but in this area you have to have that ground rod all the way in as you can see that we have here and uh, a little trick is to soak the ground heavily before trying to drive those. It makes it a little bit easier putting them in. Uh, that is just some of the requirements for getting this grounded. Now once you have all of that done, you can then 
tie in your receptacle and if you're familiar with electrical work uh, it should be something fairly simple for you it must be a GFI which we have here it must be a weather uh, resistant cover it must be a you know good protective cover uh, to keep it from getting wet and then it's just our standard wiring coming out with our power our main lead to the breaker 20 amp breaker then our ground of course is going to the ground bar as you can see there and then of course our neutral going up to our neutral bar fairly straightforward you might want to talk to your inspector prior to uh, setting this up also talk to your utility any specific requirements that they're going to have uh, for you and uh, that way it'll make it a little easier on yourself instead of having to go back and redo something because uh, you didn't do it the way that you needed to the first time give them a call they're usually pretty friendly pretty helpful anyways guys hope you liked the video uh, i'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up also, be sure to subscribe. Drop me any comments with questions down below. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos in the series, and we'll see you next time.